Ciao, uh, we are very happy, me and Dr. Ryan Scafi, and very grateful to the president of the Italian Society of Orthodontics, Dr. Maino, and Dr. Paolo Manzo, the president of the Academy of the Italian Orthodontics, to invite us. We are focused today about the artificial intelligence, so about how the artificial intelligence is reshaping the future of, of orthodontics, the, about the clinical protocols, the digital workflow, and also how it changed the patient experience and how our doctor experience. So let's start. We really hope that you enjoy with us about our presentation and uh, about uh, our goals. Uh, Ryan is a, a friend of mine, as you can say about the picture. I think that me and Ryan together work, um, travel a lot, uh, a lot of in a lot of places around the world. And Ryan is a really good dentist, a really good doctor, but he's the most person expert that I know in, in the dentistry field. That is expert about the artificial intelligence and about technology in, in the orthodontic world and in the dentist world. So I really hope that you enjoy with him about the knowledge about the artificial intelligence and etc. Silvia, thank you so much for this beautiful introduction. It's a huge pleasure to be here uh, presenting with you today. So for who, for you among you who doesn't who don't know Silvia, she is an adjunct professor since 2017. She holds a master in pediatric and interceptive orthodontics. She's a researcher, a speaker, and a key opinion leader for many dental industries. So I think that both together we are a good couple to present you about these topics that we really love. The presentation is divided in two parts, two big parts. The first one that is uh, Ryan the boss, it's about the artificial intelligence, about what you need to know, because uh, a lot of people talk about artificial intelligence, but what is the artificial intelligence? And and what a change in the world of healthcare thanks to the artificial intelligence. And also it's a, the, the digital workflow is not only the artificial intelligence, but there is also something about the digital workflow, other software, other app, the revolution that Invisalign starts in the world with the, um, with the digital protocols, in, with the clear aligner. So how we can uh, uh, digitalize our orthodontic experience like doctor and at the end we uh, present to you something about the future of orthodontics. So why we are here as you understand we are uh, we really love uh, this uh, this world and what is changing now also for the patient journey in the virtual area are the steps. What 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 does it mean? that from the beginning, for before the first visit, when you, you can use the virtual consultation at home, uh, when you do the first visit and you start to show the, the future smile with the patients uh, during the diagnosis and also during the monitoring of the patients, you have a lot of software, a lot of technologies that you can add in, in your orthodontic treatment. 
And also, if at the beginning we are focused on the diagnosis, it's important also to understand what's happened after. So this is the powerful of other of the monitoring of the treatment. So we explain what can change in your patient journey, and. Uh, uh, what can use in your virtual workflow. So we explain the science behind the digitalization and also we explain to you how you can integrate your protocols. So let's start. Uh, and also don't forget that uh, as uh, Ryan said before, I work in the University of L'Aguila. We did a lot of scientific publication all together. Uh, and we are here both together because we are studying a lot. And uh, also in now in the scientific publication, you can find the results of the digitalization and how much the monitoring and how much the artificial intelligence can improve your orthodontic treatment. So it's the same that if you drive safe. Let's start, Ryan. So let's start with the science piece. Everything you need to know about artificial intelligence. And the aim of this section is really to answer your most common questions, which are, what is artificial intelligence? How does it work? How will it impact the healthcare world? And eventually, the most important question is, how will it improve your life as an orthodontist? So open your eyes, open your ears. This is going to be interesting. Now, if you like most people, my bet is that you have none to very little knowledge about the topic. And yet, every time you hear these two words, artificial intelligence, you have strong mental Im images of it. Strong mental images of cyber soldiers, killer robots, and artificial general intelligence taking over the world and enslaving us. But why? Why do you have this biased thinking when this technology is really at the beginning? Well, let me tell you the story really quickly. It all started back in 1997 when IBM, the developed a machine called Deep Blue, beat the world chess champion, Gary Kasparov. And it was a huge deal. Why? Because it was the first time in the world that a machine beat a world human champion. And this had propagated the machine versus man idea. The press, they took advantage of it, and film producers, they started to make a big thing out of it. And from there, it just snowballed. But the good news is that you really don't have to worry about this because the truth is AI is already around us. AI is already making our everyday lives better. So let me start by showing you some few examples of where AI is today and how it is impacting our lives. First example, the most obvious one is the Tesla self-driving cars. You've all seen this. And actually not long time ago, Elon Musk announced that we are very close to achieving level five of automation, which means the car is doing everything on its own. Second example, well, facial recognition, a technology that was invented by Facebook in 2014. If you have an iPhone today or even a new Samsung, you're already using this technology every day. Now let's see some fun facts about AI. For example, AI is able to read your lips and know what you're talking. Another funny fact is if you have an Instagram page, today, artificial intelligence is able to diagnose depression only by looking at your page. If you're interested about knowing this, I have the study link just down there. So now let's talk, it's, it's fun and all, but let's be serious. Let's see how this technology is really improving the healthcare world. What did it did in this, uh, in this field? So I want you to take a few seconds to look at this graph. What you're seeing here is the number of studies on machine and deep learning in the world of healthcare that have been published in PubMed in the past few years. Now, just look between the, the year 2010 and 2019, the huge peak in these kind of studies. So in, in, back in 2005, we were only shy of 200 studies. Today, we're getting close to almost 8,000 studies where the biggest fields are oncology, pathology, and radiology. Now, if you look at the little circles on the left, what do we see? We see the word of dentistry here. I mean, this is a good start. We, we're very at the beginning, but it's a good sign. It's a sign that we're on the right path to make dentistry smart and more intelligent. And also the good news is that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. All we have to do is look at the world of healthcare, copy them, learn from the mistakes, learn from their experiences and do the same in our field. So let's see how the world of uh, healthcare, they really leverage this technology. Let me show you some few examples. First one is artificial intelligence really helped them with the research field. For example, IBM, they developed a machine that was able to read 
5,000 new medical studies in one day. Needless to say that this is almost impossible by any human. Another example is remote monitoring. So a life core is an innovative company and this was actually the first medical device that got an FDA approval in the world of healthcare that uses an artificial intelligence technology. What they are able to do is to, they call this actually the, the first bloodless blood test. So only from the patient ECG through a bracelet, like the Apple watch that you have today, they can monitor the level of blood potassium, which is something that could save lives. Another great example, the world of radiology, which is today the most impacted by this technology. Great example is breast cancer. Today, AI is able to accurately diagnose breast cancer with an accuracy level of 95%, better than any professional on the market. And last example that I wanna show you today, well, if you've been looking at the news lately, you've heard about the COVID vaccine and you've heard that it was breaking record because it was the fastest time ever in the world that we develop a vaccine. Well, guess what's behind the scene? AI, of course. So that takes us to the next question. What is artificial intelligence? And let me explain it to you in the most simple terms. In the most simple terms, in a nutshell, artificial intelligence is really an algorithm. It's math, right? But this math, it enables the machine to think like a human. It makes it more intelligent. And the end goal is really to help us human become much more efficient. AI often relies on what we call neural networks. So neural networks are really what we call computing units that mimic the, the neurons in our brain. They act the same way. Just look at this picture for a while. We're not engineers, we don't need to go into the details, but it's pretty, it's pretty interesting to see uh, the similarity between a biological neuron and an artificial one. If you look at those, they are the exact same thing. The only difference is on the left, the biological one is using biochemical signals. On the right, it is using electrical circuits, which are way faster and more efficient. And all of this was possible due to the effort of this man, Jeffrey Hinton. Because AI has been around for 100 years, but it only took off in the 80s when Jeffrey Hinton asked himself one question that changed the game forever. He asked himself, in order to mimic intelligence, we have to understand what intelligence is. So he asked himself, what is intelligence? And from there, he actually went and studied the human brain, the connections in our brain, the neurons, how they work, how they transmit the signals. And he applied the same principles with the machines and algorithm. And from there, the technology just took off. Now, the next thing that you need to know about artificial intelligence is that it is not one technology, but it's a collection of technologies. The word AI represents a concept, but then you have more than 15 applications of AI in the world. And the, most, the terms that we hear more often are machine learning and deep learning. So very quickly, very simply, let's see what's the difference between those. Machine learning is actually the ability for a computer to learn and train itself through algorithms without being explicitly programmed. So all you have to do is feed it a lot of data at the early stage of development. But when I say a lot of data, I'm not talking thousands of pictures, I'm talking really millions of pictures and potentially billions so that the system become reliable. So in a way, machine learning is like a baby. At the beginning, the baby is fragile. He needs you to, he needs you to nurture him, to teach him everything step by step. But at one point, the child becomes self-sufficient and he can learn and develop on its own. Same thing with the machines. Some examples of machine learning and dentistry today. On the left, you can see that machine learning was trained to be able to detect gingivitis. And maybe you cannot see those here, but we have little numbers that have prediction scores and they say how accurate this prediction is. On the right, this is an example of how it is able to do automatic customized tracing and cephalometric analysis. Moving on to the most advanced type of artificial intelligence today, which is called deep learning. Deep learning, the difference here is that we have multi-layered networks of data. So if you look here, this is actually starting to resemble a human brain. The more we have these hidden layers, the more uh, sophisticated the system becomes. And today in the world of dentistry, there's only one uh, company in the world that is able to do this, um, which is dental monitoring. So with the ability to remotely monitor a patient through sending few photographs and images, 
This system is so well trained that it is able to detect more than 180 clinical situations or clinical parameters in the mouth. And these are just a few examples. Recession, gingivitis, it can, you know, it can be so precise that it can tell you we have a noticeable unseat on the tooth 12 and so on. So a brief overview of where we are today in the dental world. This here represents uh, all the studies that we have in the dental world today. So you can see it's impacting x-rays, carriage detections, digital smile design, and so on. In the orthodontic world today, there's only one company doing this remotely, which is dental monitoring. And if you're interested to know more about how AI is working in the dental field, the impact, the, the, the companies, I really recommend this article, which is a great summary of everything that is happening in the dental world today. And if you want to take it a step further and really know the, the real impact of AI in the world of healthcare, then I would recommend this great book called Deep Medicine by the world leader, uh, Eric Topol. So Eric Topol is actually uh, by far the leader on AI research in the world of medicine and in the world of healthcare in general. And one of my favorite quote by Eric Topol is the following one, that AI, the real power of AI is giving you, uh, the healthcare professional back, the gift of time. And you will see this uh, with uh, Sylvia's part. So now we move on to the orthodontic world and where AI stands in this world. Sylvia, I give the mic to you. Amazing, Ryan. Really thank you to share with us your knowledge. And now probably my role is a little bit easiest. <laughs> we come back in the orthodontic world and explain what we can do in our orthodontic experience as a doctor and also how this experience can influence our patient journey, our staff. So um, it's easiest. It, first of all, it's important to understand why the orthodontic world is changed. And now how we can uh, take these, uh, uh, all these things that are changed and uh, feel that we can drive this new car in this new orthodontic world. So Invisalign was the first revolution. Invisalign started with uh, an, like an orthodontic technique and now is an, a digital orthodontic system. And the heart of the treatment is the clean check software. So in the digital treatment planning, we can take, take the control. We left from we move from um, react a proactive model and we we a uh, reactive model and we start with a proactive model. So with the clean check, we planning what's happened in a digital way. But uh, what is important is, is also and the second revolution that Invisalign did with the Hitero is to digitalize the patient data and also to think uh, like in a digital way. So we can start to communicate with the Hitero. And the, the step farther is the third revolution that starts with dental monitoring in the monitoring, in the digital monitoring with the artificial intelligence into the treatment. So now we explain what is the digital world workflow. Imagine that the, uh, in the digital workflow, you change a lot of things and these five steps are the most important. Uh, we didn't speak about economics part because it's not our goal, but uh, the digital workflow influences the patient journey the staff because you must invest time to delegate to the staff something, all the things that you can because you must grow in number of patients. You change the communication with patients and you uh, in digitalize everything. And in this, digi in this digitalization, you change the world. Uh, with the ClinCheck software, you can uh, improve your diagnosis. For example, you have the possibility now with the ClinCheck 6.0 within phase to see how the modification that you, that you do on your ClinCheck uh, to see in the amount of the patient. So this is a great experience. And you have the possibility now, for example, when I doing in this ClinCheck to I extrude the upper incisors. And with this extrusion, I have the possibility to see these in the patient. So it's a very beautiful to understand how is the effect of our thinking, of our diagnosis, not only in our mind, but uh, really in the, in the software. And uh, the second possibility that we have with this is also to show this to our patients. So the reaction that generally the patients uh, have, it's um, amazing because they really can see in our mount what is changing. In-phase is not uh, a communication tool, 
but it's a, a, an app that we can use to do a better diagnosis. So this is the, the um, and this is very important. In this presentation, I, we have no time to talk about uh, everything about the, the ClinCheck software, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, uh, possibility that we have to improve our, our results. And what is important also to know is that we have an evolution of the biomechanics. What's mean? What is the meaning? That what we program on the in the diagnosis step, what we program in the uh, in the ClinCheck software, we must sure that happen in the amount of the patient. Why? Because uh, we know that in the in this uh, in this technological world. Uh, it's important to do a good diagnosis, but also it's important to follow what's happening in the amount of the patient. Before uh, the biomechanical, uh, uh, the biomechanics in uh, in uh, with aligners is completely different from biomechanics with uh, braces, and the revolution that we did is the for for sure within this align is the smart for feeders because it's some something that uh, uh, years of research of biomechanics that design specific attachment and also the smart stage technology there is a logarithmic calculation that uh, combined with the protocol help us to have a, a good staging is is the how invisible stage is movement so um, and we present a, a, a case about invisible first that it's a protocol for um, growing patients and what is important about this protocol is to understand how is important the protocols how is important the to know the, the the protocols for example the this case like francesco that he has a narrow arch second class so this is an interceptive orthodontics you can take all the scan all the data uh, all the records with the um, with the hetero you can know in the in the right way the patients uh, close the mount uh, the goal of this treatment is to expand the arch but what, what can be the difference that we, the difficulties that we have a little crown. So this is important to know why, why we must use the, the, the ClinCheck software. And as you can say, the software can propose us to have a sequential expansion that is the best uh, predictable that you, that we can use optimized little attachment that are for little crown. And so in one treatment, we can expand the arch, but we can also control the vertical dimension and we, we, we can also control the resolution of the first class and only in, in 31 aligners. So it's, this is amazing. Invisalign first is really, really, really amazing. And also when we control with the ITERO, we have the progress assessment. So each time that the patient come to the chairs, we can control everything. The second step to digitalize your workflow, so diagnosis, but also monitoring. Remember the, how is important the biomechanical approach. So the, with the monitoring, we, can, we have different challenges. We have the compliance challenges because we are sure that patients uh, uh, con, uh, follow our uh, protocols. We can improve the efficiency because you can schedule the appointment uh, uh, the account accountability, so the patients not take the responsibility for the lack of the compliance and also the hygiene. Don't forget what Ryan says before, that we have the possibility to have uh, uh, 100 uh, clinical things that we can uh, uh, flag in our protocols. In my protocols, I'm focused on hygiene and only on the orthodontic treatment because I'm an orthodontist, but you can really, really, really follow everything in your treatment. You can do, as you say, in the, as you can see in the first video, a remote monitoring. You can have step by step for each aligner. You can control what's happened, and there, you in that point, you have the artificial intelligence that uh, help you to see more than you can see only with your eyes. You can have a go when you are uh, when you all the things that you flag are okay. Not only the fitting, but you can see that the fitting in there it's okay because it's the only one thing that generally we see with our eyes. And this is one of the protocols that we can have with dental monitoring. Is the uh, is the but there are more than one protocol. So we can have different uh, uh, protocols. So we can have go and no go in this way. For example, this is a an. Uh, uh, a very terrible uh, patient, but we can have the no-go to stop and redo the scan and program this. 
this technology also, as I said before, improves the patient communication because we can communicate with patients for each aligner and can under and can also improve the compliance of the patients with this, and also the the feedback and treatment progress visualization. Uh, it's really wonderful for patients because they can see how it's changing their smile, and they can show this also with their friends. So this is amazing for patients. I, I really like it. And also the instant communication. They don't call the practice, the practice call you, but the patients can directly uh, write of you. As I said before, uh, it's not something that you can do everything alone. It's important to invest time in staff. It's important to delegate, but uh, it's a really good opportunity to work better and to improve your predictability and grow in number of cases. Thank you, Sylvia. That was a great overview of uh, the evolution of the orthodontic world. So like Sylvia mentioned, the, the orthodontic world, it evolved so much, but some challenges remain is that traditional orthodontic models don't work anymore because we have no over, we have zero visibility over what's happening in between appointments and a lot can happen in between appointments. So this is the first big role of remote monitoring to have to take back the control and keep a visibility, keep your patient engaged. Now, the second big part is practice efficiency. Now, what you see on this slide is a global overview of how the automation that AI gives you can significantly incre increase the practice efficiency. So when the patient takes a scan, all the pictures, hundreds of pictures will go through the AI system for a preliminary analysis. And from there, the AI will automate the communication to the patient, to the team, and to yourself as a doctor. But let's take a step back. You might be wondering, I don't want the AI to take decisions for me. And it's not, okay? Why? Because you are building all your protocols. You are customizing every little detail in your protocol. For example, you can let the AI uh, know what it needs to monitor for you. That's one thing. And for each of these clinical parameters, you can tell it what to tell to the team and what to tell to the patient. So in, in essence, you are always a commander in chief. You are always controlling everything that is going on. The AI is only help is only here to help you take care of these little repetitive tasks. So to put that into context, when we talk about efficiency, uh, when we compare self-assessment of photos versus AI-powered remote monitoring, there are three major differences that comes to mind. The first one is scalability, because there's only there's, there's a limit to what you can do manually, you and your team. The artificial intelligence doesn't have any limit. It's working all the time. The second thing is consistency. So the AI is really the perfect employee. It's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no internet and attentional blindness. It just keeps going and going. And the last part, of course, is accuracy. Why? Because the computers don't see the images like we do. The computers, he assesses the, the, the pictures on a pixel level, which is impossible for any human. So now we reach the end of our presentation, but before ending, I'd like to, uh, to end with a couple of more slides and a couple of uh, key lessons to keep in your mind before ending this. So what you're seeing here in front of you is the life cycle of every business evolution and uh, invention and revolution. And each business goes th through the exact same four cycles, starting up, growing, maturing, and eventually declining. And this decline phase is almost inevitably uh, you cannot avoid it, right? Unless you keep on top of the game, you reinvent yourself and you stay flexible. And that's only possible when you keep uh, the perfect mindset. So a growth mindset to be able to be flexible and change and survive. Now, if you st so now it's needless to say that there is a next evolution. It's already knocking on our doors and it's called artificial intelligence. We've seen it with the healthcare world. And now the same thing will apply in the orthodontic words. We're going to become much more intelligent. And if you're still wondering, how will this AI technology affect you? Or maybe you're still wondering, will it replace me someday? Well, let me tell you what Eric Topol, the world leader on AI research, is telling us. He's telling us the following. When they asked him, uh, will, it, will, it, will it replace the radiologists, which are today the most affected by this technology? He said the following. To avoid being displaced by computers, Healthcare professionals must allow themselves to be displayed by computers. So in other terms, what he's saying is that the AI will not replace doctors, but the doctors who use AI will replace the ones that don't. And
And also Eric Topol used this beautiful analogy to explain to us how it, it will change our lives. So he used the analogy of the self-driving cars. In the self-driving cars, you have five levels of automation. From zero, we have nothing, no automation at all, to level five, where you have zero control over what's happening. He said, in the healthcare world, the automation will not surpass the level three. Meaning, you as a doctor, you will be always the captain of the ship. You will always have full control over what's happening. You're always a decision maker. The AI is only taking care of these repetitive, mundane tasks that you don't want to get involved with. So it's automating them. You're gaining a lot of time to focus on what you do best, which is human connection, the, the, the diagnosis, the treatment planning. And so the final message that I want to leave you with is that you should avoid having these negative thoughts. Stop having these worries about AI that it might replace you someday or make you less human. Because the truth is quite the opposite. It's only when you join power with artificial intelligence and you work together synergistically that you become a better human and a better doctor. Thank you for listening. Really thank you to enjoy with us this presentation and let's start your digital revolution in your practice. Thank you. Ciao. Hope you Ciao. enjoyed. And remember one last thing, be this guy here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>